Do you ever leave the office feeling like you haven't done enough for the day? In this video, I'll show you how to create a detailed job description that will make that feeling a thing of the past for you and your people. And you'll want to stick around until the end of the video because I'll let you look over my shoulder as I create a job description. Hi everybody and welcome to something a little different from iProv. I'm Patrick Laughlin and today we are starting a series of deep dives into some of the tools and processes we use to help business leaders grow their business. Remember that feeling I mentioned earlier, that I haven't done enough for the day feeling? If you're a business owner or a business leader, you know, it's okay for you to feel that. You signed up for it, right? Uh, but it's not okay for your people to feel that way. And if they do feel that way often, it can probably be traced back to not being clear on what their responsibilities uh, in their role are day to day. Uh, you know, they signed up for a really specific job. Uh, they didn't sign up to guess what they need to be doing each day to be successful and fulfill the needs of the business. So let's talk about job descriptions, more specifically what we call detailed job descriptions and how they can banish that not enough feeling for our team and make our lives as managers simpler and more productive. It's important that you use these job descriptions as a tool uh, and really a day-to-day -day management tool because you know, most people think that they only need a job description when they're recruiting or immediately after they hire someone, but we believe that they're an essential for managing day-to-day -day activities and performance of team members. So let's look at what makes a detailed job description such a great tool for aligning team members and how we create them at iProv. The first step is you've got to have some clearly defined roles and, and what that role is responsible for, right? What outcomes are you going to measure them by? This should come directly from your org chart or your responsibility roadmap. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, check out the video in the link in the description and we'll tell you more about that. Once you know where this person lives in the organization and what they're responsible for, you start to define who they are and how they fit into your culture. So let's talk a little bit about the ideal candidate. Here's where you think carefully about the person you want doing this job. You write a paragraph and, and you write a paragraph describing them. Look carefully at your core values and describe the personality traits this person needs to possess to be a good fit, both for the position as well as your company. What credentials or qualifications must they have to do this job? Uh, and how will they be rewarded for a job well done? Uh, just a really quick tip, sometimes it's easier to write what you don't want in somebody and then adjust from there. Now you know who you want and you know what you want them doing every day, let's talk about setting expectations for performance. Uh, and for us, this comes down to creating a list of job functions that you want uh, this person that's gonna fill this role in your company to do on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and even yearly basis. Be really specific about what you expect them to do and don't leave room for interpretation. This is what allows an employee to leave the office feeling great about their day and like they've done everything they could to move the company closer to achieving its vision. So let's hop over to the computer and write a really quick job description together. Step one is define the role. Uh, look at where this position falls on your org chart or your responsibility roadmap. Is it an entry level position? Is it a senior position? What are the qualifications this person needs in order to do this job effectively? Um, you, you know, what are their major responsibilities? Uh, we're gonna create an account coordinator. Uh, an account coordinator at uh, IPROV is uh, responsible for uh, sort of uh, assisting um, uh, account managers uh, in preparing materials for clients. Uh, they're also uh, responsible for, and, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to sort of indent this with bullet points. Uh, don't worry, Samantha, we're not looking for a new account coordinator. You're doing great. We just want to sort of use you as an example. Um, uh, they're also responsible for managing the help desk. Uh, you know, if you send in a, an email, they're the, going to be the first line of con uh, contact. Uh, manage help desk. Let's give them one more. Um, you know, they're, they're responsible for attending meetings uh, and uh, sending recaps to clients. Next up, let's describe our ideal candidate. What are the personality traits this person needs to have to be successful at the job? Um, you know, what education do they need, if any, right? 
Um, you, how do they fit within our core values and our culture? Because ultimately, that's how they're going to be successful here. Uh, and you know, this is where you can be a little, um, you can be a little more open about you know the kind of person that you want to attract, right? You want to make sure that they tie to your core values. Is it something that requires some special credentialing, or do, are there special qualifications that you want this person to have? But uh, you know, for this job, it, it's really an entry level job, and so. Uh, we want to make sure that we're not asking too much of the people that uh, are doing it. It's, it's a hard job, um, but we want to make sure that we are uh, both preparing them for the job that they're going to take on and that we're preparing ourselves for what we can expect for the person um, doing this job. So um, we'll just start it off with something simple like uh, uh, account coordinators at IPROV uh, should be uh, uh, are the first people clients talk to when they have a problem. They should be good uh, at communicating with people. Uh, uh, there's probably a better way to write that, but we'll come back and we'll draft it later. Um, they Good clerical skills, because really, this is uh, this is sort of a they need to be eager to learn. Um, ultimately, they are working for somebody else inside of the agency, so they're there to learn how to take over somebody else's job eventually. So that, that's pretty good. You know, it's not a bad little paragraph. And then lastly. Let's set good expectations for what we want this person doing every day as their manager. Uh, and not just every day, but every day, every week, every month, maybe every quarter, and possibly even every year. Uh, it's, it, it's the thing that lets them go home at night feeling like they did everything that they were supposed to at the end of the day. Um, and so uh, daily for uh, an account coordinator, they need to manage help desk requests. Um, and so we'll just sort of put in here manage help desk requests. Um, and that's something that I want them to do every day, right? And so, but then let's, let's get even more detailed there. And let's say um, that, you know, we want them to respond uh, to tickets uh, submitted by clients. If I can type today. Uh, we want them to uh, create tasks in Asana based on those tickets. Uh, and we want them to close tickets uh, as they get completed. Uh, great, okay. Uh, also, we want them to uh, manage our ticket board in Asana. So the, we'll add that as a new sort of major responsibility. We'll add some bullets here. You know, we want to make, want them to make sure that tasks get added to the sprint uh, or to the backlog, right? I want to make sure that uh, any task uh, from a ticket is on the sprint. Uh, or on, um, gets moved to in progress. Just a little bit of description about what what they need to do with with sort of each of these sort of major responsibilities, right? Um, and then, lastly, we'll we'll, uh, we'll you know we'll, we'll we'll go ahead and just add this mark tickets um, that are ready to close uh, closed once we once they've. Close the ticket in the help desk. So there's a couple daily responsibilities. Uh, some of the other ones, uh, you know, we could look at are things like uh, attend meetings with uh, account managers, and you know, we don't. That's pretty self-explanatory. We don't need to uh, meetings with account managers. Uh, that doesn't need to really any more detail there. Um, uh, and so then let's talk about what we want them to do weekly, 
because uh, you know that that's important too. And so uh, things like you know we want we want uh, our account managers to prepare our account coordinators to prepare marketing reports each week. Um, you know we don't present marketing reports to clients each week, um, but we we prepare them. Uh, you know, we present them monthly, but we prepare them weekly based on when the, the account managers are having their next meeting with, uh, with clients. Uh, the other thing we like them to do is uh, create SEM rush reports. Um, and, and these are specific for sales and marketing. Uh, and so sales and marketing use these uh, as tools as we're talking to new clients. Um, and so we can sort of dress that up if we want to, you know, we can sort of put those in bullets and we can do the same up here too, uh, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. So let's talk about what we might want this person to do monthly, right? Um, and so this could be something like, uh, you know, create uh, client contract updates. You know, if we're signing new clients or if clients uh, renew, um, they don't all renew at the same time. So, um, you know, this person would be great at, uh, you know, updating client contracts uh, as needed. Um, then in terms of quarterly or yearly, uh, you know, there's not just a whole lot for uh, an account manager to sort of do or be regularly prepared for, but we might have uh, some, you know, sort of a whole nother category here. So we can copy and paste this. And let's just call this as needed, right? Sometimes they're just things that come up. And so having an ads needed category uh, can be really, really helpful. It's things like uh, organize client materials in the drive. Uh, and you could argue that this could be a, a daily or a weekly task, but uh, not, not all clients' materials change in the drive all that often. So really this is more of an as needed basis. Um, and also we could look at things like, uh, you know, creating client dashboards uh, inside of our reporting tool. Just a couple of quick examples. So you can see it doesn't take very, very long. It does take a little bit of thought, but now you've got a better picture in your mind about uh, the person that you'd like to be doing this job, what they're like, uh, and what they should be doing every day, every week, every month. Uh, and, and they have a good idea of how they need to operate in order to be successful in your company. Ready to start using detailed job descriptions in your company? Let us help you get started with our free detailed job description worksheet template. Click the link in the description below to download it. Also remember to like and subscribe if we've earned it. See you guys soon and peace peeps.